What up folks, Alex here. Now this right here is one of the latest NVIDIA RTX Studio laptops. This is a Gigabyte Aero 15YA and it's packing an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Max-Q with eight gigabytes of video RAM. Now this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and Scan Computers. If you wanna have a look at this particular laptop or the rest of the NVIDIA RTX Studio range available via Scan Computers, check out the links down in the description below. Now, NVIDIA got in touch with me and they've asked me to demonstrate some of the speed increases you see when using an NVIDIA RTX laptop with an RTX GPU within DaVinci Resolve Studio 16. Because DaVinci Resolve Studio 16 actually boasts about a dozen GPU accelerated effects which take full advantage of the CUDA and Tensor Core capabilities of these new RTX GPUs. In theory at least, this laptop should be able to play Red Code 8K raw video files in real time, as well as absolutely smashing through all the GPU accelerated effects within DaVinci Resolve. Now, obviously, this is the Mr. Alex Tech channel, so I'm not just going to inundate you with numbers and benchmarks and graphs. What we're going to do is take three of those GPU accelerated effects. I'm going to show you how to run them and what they do, and then we're also going to compare this laptop versus my desktop PC. Now my desktop PC is a few years old and it's only running an NVIDIA GTX 1060 6 gig. So my money is definitely on the laptop, but by exactly how much is what I'm really interested in. What do you think? Do you think it's gonna be 10% faster, 20%, 30%, 50%? Let me know down in the comments below. Right, now before we get into it, listed on screen now are all the things that we're gonna cover and I've clearly marked whether it's available within the free version of DaVinci Resolve or whether you need DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, if you do use the free version, still stick around because I'm going to show you these really cool features which you might not have seen before, so it's well worth watching. Now, just to let you know, we rendered off everything just using the GPU and we didn't use any proxy files or smart cache. Everything is real time, straight off the disk. So with all that out of the way, let's open DaVinci Resolve and get straight into it. First up, we've got Optical Flow and Speed Warp. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm just gonna open up my project settings and I'm just gonna show you the timeline resolution is set to 1080p and the timeline frame rate is set to 30 frames per second. Now on the timeline, we've just got this American flag. It's just a footage of American flag blowing in the wind and it's running at 30 frames per second. And what we're gonna do is take this 30 frames per second footage and just slow it down. So I'm gonna make a quick duplicate. To do that, all of them, give it a click hold down the Alt key and then you can just drag it to create a duplicate. We're gonna highlight it on the timeline, right click, go to change clip speed, and then we're gonna change the speed from 100 to 20%. And then if we hit play on this, you can see that the footage is really janky and really stuttery. And that's because we've taken this 30 frames per second footage, we've slowed it down to 20% speed, so there's actually only six frames per second. So we're gonna try and improve that a little bit using optical flow. So we're just gonna make another duplicate of this clip here, and we're gonna give it a click so it's highlighted on the timeline. We're gonna open up the inspector in the top right-hand corner. We're gonna scroll down to retime and scaling and open that. And then within the retime process area, change that from project settings to optical flow. So if we play that back, you can see it looks a hell of a lot better than it did. But if you pay close attention to the end of the flag here, you can see there's a little bit of ghosting going on. So now we're gonna take this one step further and we're gonna apply speed warp. So I'm just gonna duplicate this once again. And then in the same area, in the inspector, retime and scaling, we're just gonna to go to motion estimation and we're gonna turn on speed warp. Now if we just hit play, you can see that's even better still. In fact, that's pretty indistinguishable from proper slow motion shot with a high frame rate. Now you're gonna to struggle to play that back in real time, even on this laptop with this graphics card. So what we're gonna do now is export this and we'll have a look at the results. So we're just gonna shoot over to deliver. We're gonna use H.264 master just as a default. So everything is the same. We'll add this to the render queue and then we're just gonna start the render. And for the results, the GTX desktop did it in two minutes and 21 seconds, while the RTX laptop took just one minute and one second. That's over twice as fast, saving me a full minute in render times, even in this short test. Now that is a huge difference, and it can probably be put down to the unique design of these RTX GPUs, 
and the inclusion of their tensor cores. And the idea behind these NVIDIA tensor cores is they automate mundane and repetitive tasks to save you time when running advanced effects like the speed warp. You see, speed warp relies on DaVinci Resolve's neural engine, which uses deep learning and AI or artificial intelligence. And the tensor cores within this laptop are specifically designed to work well with deep learning and AI, which is why there's such a huge difference. So next up, we've got power windows, tracking and object removal. Let's see how it gets on. Now again, we're running a 1080p timeline, but this time we're using 24 frames per second. So the first thing we're gonna do is select and track this white truck at the back. So we don't actually need to do anything within this edit page. We're gonna head straight into the color tab. And then with the color tab open, just make sure that you've got your nodes open like so. So you should see your preview window and then your nodes on the right hand side. And then down in the middle here, we're just gonna select this icon here which is our windows. Now make sure you get the beginning of your clip. So make sure you scrub all the way back to the far left. And then what we're gonna do is draw a power window around this truck and then we're gonna track it. So you can use either the square circle or you can freehand it with a pen. I'm just gonna use the square. So I'm gonna give that a click and it'll plunk one straight onto the preview window. And we're just gonna adjust that so it's around the truck. Now you wanna be relatively accurate, but you need to leave some space around the edges just in case there's a little bit of shifting. And there we go, we're gonna go with something like that. Now once that's selected, we're gonna shoot over to this icon here, which is the tracker. And then all we're gonna do, again, make sure that you're over to the far left of your footage, and then we're just gonna hit play. And there we go, it's done that nice and quickly for us. So with that track, I can actually make any changes in here, so color wheels, saturation, whatever it may be, and it'll only apply to those things within that power window. So if I boost up this contrast, it's only gonna be boosting the contrast for anything within that power window, and that's gonna be tracked along the way. A really useful tool while you're here is if we go back to the power window, then what you can actually do is click on this icon here, and it'll inverse the selection. So now if I do the contrast again, it'll increase the contrast for everything except that within the power window. And it's as easy as that to select an object, track it within your footage, and then make selective adjustments. Now we're gonna take this to the next level and we're gonna actually use object removal to remove the truck from this scene. Now this is limited to those using DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now first up, if you've inverted that, just unclick that to make it so that the truck is selected rather than everything else. And then we're gonna create a new node. So right click on this node here within the nodes, add node, add a serial like so. Then we're just gonna drag this little blue square to this blue triangle like so. Then we're gonna open up the open effects. We're gonna scroll down until you see the resolve FX revival. Then we're gonna grab the object removal tool and drag it onto this node. And then you'll see all the settings for the object removal tool in here. The first thing we need to do is just click on scene analysis. And DaVinci Resolve will analyze the scene ready for the object removal. Now I'm just gonna bring up my GTX scene analysis and you can see the difference. This is another prime example of the speed increases you get with NVIDIA RTX. Just another few short moments and then that will be done. Now we've got this bit of gray showing here. So what we're gonna do, scroll down to where you see clean plate. And I'm just gonna build a clean plate. And that's gonna get rid of that. And now if we hit play, And that's it. That's how you use the object removal tool. So now let's go to the deliver tab. We're gonna do the same as we did before, H.264, and we'll see how long that takes to render. And as you can see, that took no time at all, while my desktop PC is still trying to analyze the scene. And it got there eventually. Now, even if we ignore the scene analysis, it's still a clear win for the RTX laptop, taking just four seconds to render out this scene versus the 17 seconds for the GTX desktop. And that equates to a over 400% increase. Yep, 400%, that's crazy. That's only using a short example again. Imagine if you had minutes worth of footage to do object removal, you'd be saving yourself a huge amount of time. And that's not to mention the fact that this is a laptop. 
Look how thin this thing is. It's thin, it's light, it's super portable. It's actually not even that loud. You do hear the fans a little bit, but it's not too bad. You generally can take this thing anywhere and smash together really complicated 4K projects with loads of advanced effects without even worrying about it. It's damn impressive. So next up, the face refinement tool, which, bing, in a few seconds can make even me look really beautiful. Ooh. So let's open Resolve and we'll have a look. So this one is a little bit different. I'm just gonna open up my project settings. You can see this is a 4K timeline, but again, it's running at 24 frames per second. So we're just gonna use this first clip for our demo here. So we're just gonna jump into the color tab, open effects tab. We're gonna scroll down until you see the Resolve FX Refine. And then we're gonna use the face refinement tool and drop it onto our node. Now nothing will happen initially. So what you've gotta do is just analyze the scene. So we're gonna hit analyze up here. And as you can see, what it will do is analyze all of the footage and pick out the person's face. And what it's actually doing is tracking the jawline, the chin, the cheeks, as you can see from here, the lips, the nose, the eyes, and the eyebrows. And then you can use this tracking to make specific refinements to those different elements of the faces within your footage. Now again, this is 4K, and this is all in real time, so you can see how quick it is to analyze. That's all done. So the first thing you wanna do is just untick this box that says show overlay so you can actually see what we're doing. And let's go for about here. And we're gonna scroll down and the first thing we're gonna look at is texture. So the operating mode is beauty automatic, we'll leave it as that. And then you've got the amount. So we're just gonna increase this and you can see her skin will start to get a little bit softer. A little bit and just to soften her up like so. We'll scroll down a little bit. And then we've got color grading. So we're gonna adjust the contrast, mid-tones, color boost, tint, all just on her face. So we're gonna do loads of contrast just so it's nice and easy to see. Keep going down, we've got some eye retouching. So let's sharpen the eyes so they pop out. We can brighten the eyes. We can increase the light around the whole eye area if we want to. And we can remove any eye bags if there are any there. We've got the same sort of adjustments for lips, blush, forehead, cheek, and chin retouching and then we're going to head back into the edit tab and now as you can see a 4k timeline with the face being tracked with all those refinements still plays back at a perfect 24 frames per second now this also works for groups of people so we're just going to do the same thing i'm going to shoot into color grab the face refinement and drop it onto our node but what you'll notice this time when i hit analyze it's going to ask me which face i want to track if i click on this lady here and then hit analyze again. Now let's make some quite dramatic changes so it's easy to see. We're gonna boost up the contrast and we'll sharpen the eyes and then just brighten the whole eye area a little bit as well. So what we're gonna do here is right click, add a node, add a new serial node. So we've got a second node going on. Grab the face refinement, drag it onto the second node and we'll start the process again. We're gonna click on this person here, analyze again. And again, we're just gonna increase the contrast and we'll sharpen the eyes as well. Now we'll go back to the edit tab and you can see we can still play this back even with two faces tracked with those adjustments at the full 24 frames per second. Now we've got 25 seconds of footage here so let's render this out and see how long it takes. Same as the last two times we're going to use H.264 this time it's going to be at 4k And once again, we've got another clear victory for the RTX Studio laptop with 17 seconds versus the GTX desktop 32 seconds. And ignoring the performance benefits we saw during the face analysis, that's still almost a 100% increase, meaning you can render in pretty much half the time. And all sponsorship aside, I'm genuinely incredibly impressed with this thing. It absolutely smashed everything I've thrown at it. It's put my desktop to shame and now I really, really want one. So maybe I'll be moving to a laptop later in the year. Who knows? Oh, he's so nice. I don't want to give you back. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy the video. Comments, feedback, thoughts, all down below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Thanks to NVIDIA and Scan Computers for sponsoring the video. Take it easy, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye.